Hi, sweeties. Welcome to Sweet Savant. I'm Demetra. Let's talk about kitchen items that you should avoid. Home decor items, appliances, all types of stuff like that. Some things you might regret and we don't want you to waste your money. Let's talk about it. But first, please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell. And now let's talk about kitchen items that you should avoid. Before we get started, let's just say, this is only my opinion, although I think I'm right, <laughs> and you may disagree, but let's just talk about it. And if you agree or disagree, please leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are on what I'm about to say, because I would really love to hear your opinion. The first Kitchen item that I think you should avoid would be wood floors in the kitchen. Ask me how I know. Yeah, I have wooden floors in my kitchen and it's less than ideal. When you're baking, you know, flour tends to get all over the place and it gets stuck down in those crevices where your floor, uh, the wood slash join together and it can be difficult to vacuum out. And then, you know, you sprinkle a little water down there when you're washing dishes, the water gets out. Now, you've got a whole loaf of bread growing in your floors and you don't want that. Besides that, you know, when you spill your tomato sauce or whatnot on the floors and you've got to mop that up, you get your big old mop water bucket and slosh that around, that's a big no for hardwood floors. You really don't want to get much water on those hardwoods because it can lead to damage and rot over time. So you've got to be careful how you clean your kitchen floors and hardwoods just make things a little, well, hard to do. Ideally, you'd want, um, say, a ceramic, a porcelain, a stone type of tile or flooring in your kitchen, something that you can mop and sanitize easily. And hardwoods, you know, it's just not as conducive to keeping clean as some of those other uh, stone or ceramic or tile surfaces. One solution may be to get a washable kitchen rug. That might be an idea so that if you do spill, it doesn't get down into your floor. You can take your rug and you can shake out the flour or whatever and then put them into the, the washing machine and dryer and then put them back down on the floor. That might be a sort of a stopgap solution to keeping those kitchen floors as clean as possible. Open shelves. Okay, now I know open shelves are beautiful especially when you're scrolling like Instagram and you see all those beautiful kitchens and they all have those lovely open shelves and they're so perfectly organized and look, it's great when it's done right and organized and everything, but they are a pain to keep organized. And if you have nothing but open shelving in your kitchen, then you have to make sure that you keep it looking good. You don't want your mismatched pots and pans and plates and everything all over the place. Um, you don't want those uh, items just getting dusty. That's another problem with open shelves is that it collects dust. All of your bowls and plates and cups get dusty. And if they're near the stove, not only do they get dusty, but they get greasy. When you're cooking, that oil is popping. Your dusty plates now have grease on them, so they're greasy. It's not a good look. <laughs> and I have to admit, I do like the look of open shelving. So, you know, maybe it's an idea to have a few, maybe one or two, <laughs> open shelves away from your stovetop, somewhere where you can display like your pretty Pyrex or plates or whatever you have, um, or things that you rotate out, you use it, you wash it, you put it away, and you continually are using it so it's not collecting dust. 
and just sitting on the shelves. So that might be an idea. But in general, open shelving, it just, it takes a whole team of people to keep that looking good and keep it dusted and clean. And um, I just, it's too much for me. <laughs> if you have open shelving and you're doing it right and keeping it clean and it looks great, I would love to hear about it and hear your secrets. So please leave me a comment and let me know what magic you do <laughs> to keep your open shelves looking great. We're gonna get a little bit out of the kitchen just a little bit and talk about dining benches so you know like you've seen them in maybe the farmhouse style um, homes where you have a nice long table and a nice long bench to go with it it's cute I'm not gonna lie it looks nice but is it practical not really when you're having your your dinner your guests over you have people all different shapes and sizes and you might need to one person might need to sit farther away from the table one person may be smaller need to sit closer to the table and dining benches really do not afford that flexibility and if you have three or more people sitting on that bench it's difficult for whoever is sitting in the middle to get in and out of that bench without disturbing the people sitting beside them now, if you have kids, kids love them. They can climb in and out and bother each other. They don't really care. But for adults, maybe not so much. So I would think twice about having a dining bench. Okay, this is a big one. Bottom shelves, bottom cabinet shelves. They're the worst. And most of us have them, I have them, and they are a literal pain. A pain in your knee, a pain in your back, a pain in your neck, when you have to get down on the floor and reach into those cabinets, move those pots out of the front to get to the pot that you need that's in the back. It's terrible. <laughs> Kitchen drawers are really the way to go, and I wish I had them. I wish I had lower drawers instead of lower shelves. So one thing that I'm interested in doing is sort of retrofitting my base cabinets with the drawer mechanisms. And you can find um, these things at the Container Store, Home Depot, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon, um, maybe even Walmart. But you know, take a look at some of these ideas where you can install the drawer mechanism into your already existing base cabinet, allowing you to be able to pull out that drawer and get to those items without having to get on your hands and knees and get down in there to get those pots and pans out. That's definitely something that I'm going to be looking for in the near future. So if you have installed, retrofitted your base cabinets with these drawer mechanisms. I would love to hear about it. Please hit me up in the comments and tell me like what brand did you use? How easy or difficult was it to install if you installed it yourself or had somebody do it? Give me all the details because I want to know if you have retrofitted those drawer mechanisms into your base cabinets. Porcelain kitchen sinks. They look great. They're so beautiful. Again, you see them in those farmhouse style kitchens, especially where you have the big white porcelain sink. Um, they're gorgeous, but they can scratch easily. You have to be sure that you have some type of protective mat or rack in that sink to keep your pots and pans from scratching it when you are doing your dishes, washing your pots after dinner. If you get that cast iron or that aluminum or whatever and it scratches the bottom of your sink or the sides of your sink, it is not cute. I know because I accidentally scratched my cousin's kitchen sink when I was cooking at her house one day. She had a beautiful porcelain sink and I don't know, maybe the protective mat wasn't in there or something and I scratched the bottom of her sink. It's kind of scuffed it. Scuffed it. We'll say scuffed, not scratched. But, oh, I felt so bad. It did buff out, but it ain't cute. 
You also have to be careful because uh, porcelain, more ceramic can chip. Porcelain is a little tougher because some of them are um, have a steel or cast iron core with the porcelain over it. But that porcelain surface can chip. So keep that in mind. I would go for something as utilitarian as a kitchen sink. I stick with stainless steel. There are lots of different sink finishes. You can get them in copper and there's all kinds of different um, sinks, uh, sink options now. We can get them in colors. I saw a beautiful chic black sink. They look great, but there's one thing I don't have to want to worry about is being delicate with my kitchen sink. So I'm going to stick to stainless steel. I think it looks good and it works. It works. Hanging pot racks. Now, they look kind of cute and quaint. Again, back to that sort of farmhouse look. But they can be a bit of a nuisance if they're not hung at the proper height. Um, you know, the tall folks can hit their heads if those pots are hanging down low. Uh, for a short person like me, it's never low enough for me to reach. And... If you're really using those pots and pans and they get, you know, scorched or a little stained and you hang them up in your kitchen, it just, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Now, if you've got your beautiful, shiny copper pots and you want to display them and hang them up, I mean, I get it. I get it. But I, I for me, a pot rack is a no. It's an absolute no-go. Again, those base drawers to put your pots and pans and things in is a much more practical option. Okay, so this is a big one. Don't buy all of those countertop appliances that you see me and other folks demonstrate on YouTube. Yes, all the air fryers, ovens, blenders, ice cream makers, all of those things. Don't buy them all. You just don't want to clutter up your countertop. You don't have the drawer space. You don't want to, you know, clutter your whole kitchen with all of these appliances. Now you might be saying, then why are you showing me it if I can't have it? When I'm showing you all of the different appliances, I don't mean for you to go and buy them all. I just want to show you what works and what doesn't, what might you know, be best for you if you have this thing in mind already. How does it work? And is, is it something that you really think would be useful for you to make life easier, get dinner on the table faster and easier? But I by no means am I saying to buy all of these things. I just want to test them out and show you so that when you're in the store looking at this appliance and you say, mm, is this any good? Let me see what Sweet Savant has to say. And she's like, oh, that's a fail. Oh, that's good. That's why I'm, but I don't want you to buy everything. It's too much, too much money, too much clutter. I, and a lot of times, you know, people don't use them. How many comments have I had that you know, someone says, oh, I have this air fryer. I've had it for a year and it's been in the box. You know, I bought it or I got it for Christmas. Or I got it on Black Friday and it's just sitting in the box. But I don't want you to buy stuff that you're not really going to use. You know, watch my videos, watch the other videos and see if it's something that you really think that you're going to use and that works and does it work well, would it work well for you? But don't buy all of those appliances. It's too much money and it's too much clutter. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you agree or disagree or you know, have a comment about what I've said, please leave me a comment and we'll talk about it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Sweet Savant. Hit that thumbs up, that notification bell, and y'all have a delicious day.